Good morning and welcome. This is Sunrise Daily. I'm Ayo Makinde. Good morning and welcome. It's two days to Christmas. I am Bukola Samuel Wemimo. Well, I needed to, because I know you go to Christmas Day, so hey. That's me being nice. Well, Chamberlain already said that we'll have some form of celebration on set since uh, we're not going to be on set on Christmas. <laughs> okay, well, the celebration Somebody has started. Somebody is whispering into my ears yeah, this morning. Yeah, so the celebration has started. You're wearing the Christmas colors, white uh, and red. Well, I've worn this before. I know you're going to go well, there, uh, but, but it's Christmas okay. all the same. Uh, well, there are those who believe that, you know, some people should not um, spend their Christmas at home. Um, and it seems for the right <clears> reasons. <throat> my... Sorry? Well, it seems for the right reasons. Well, maybe, but then whether or not that will happen is something that needs to be said. Oh, don't worry, of course, our colleagues in Abuja will join us shortly. But uh, the Vice Admiral Awa Gambo, who is Nigeria's Chief of Naval Staff, says some naval personnel are collaborating with crude oil thieves. Uh, he made a claim when, you know, they were decorating 30 newly promoted rare admirals and... Um, it was a celebration, but he just kind of brought that in a look. You guys are getting promoted now. You got your work cut out for you now. According to him, some officers collaborate with, with criminal elements uh, to sabotage the efforts of the Nigerian Navy at curbing illegal bunkering and crude oil theft in the country, which, of course, we all know the consequences of that, you know, on the, the nation's economy. So he urged the newly decorated officers to dedicate themselves to protecting Nigeria's maritime environment. You know, put it, well, let, let's use his words. He said, there are pockets of personnel still colluding with criminals to sabotage these efforts. Let me therefore warn that any act of collision with criminals to, stab to sabotage measures in place to check illegality will be made to face sanctions in accordance with the laws of the land. Now, for the chief of naval staff to make this claim in public means one he has information that some of you and i may not have two it is not something that he's just finding out three they have proof having proof also means that they probably know some people so i'm just wondering if those people should spend their days the christmas days at home well, that's if they're not going to be biting at chicken on Christmas Day at home because, you know, this effort is commended. The courage to even come out in the first place to declare that some of his men, you know, are colluding with criminals to sabotage the efforts is some courage. But will they go all the way? Will he go all the way? And has he said anything new? Many civil society uh, activists, you know, even some politicians have always said what we already know and already suspect, you know, that security agents are sabotaging the efforts, you know, of government officials to um, ensure that Nigeria enjoys this commonwealth and indeed Nigerians enjoy this commonwealth. You know, recall just uh, some months back when our correspondent, you know, turning that big story of how crude oil has been siphoned you know, by uh, oil companies. It has to be in connivance with security agents, and it has gone on for nine years. So what has been said you know, that we do not already suspect, uh, this should now be backed up with extra courage to go all the way to name names and ensure that these officials are prosecuted because uh, this is tantamount to some form of uh, espionage or, or we call, we'll call it treasonable felony now. Um, in, in July, some months back, uh, Nigeria must have declared zero remittance from uh, you know, crude oil sales in the era where other countries are declaring extra profit you know, um, as a result of the Russia-Ukraine war and the increase in the price of crude oil, Nigeria is not turning in, you know, any profit. Uh, and it's only in recent days that the Minister of Finance has said that, uh, you know, crude oil sales has shored up. So if these findings, you know, are taking us anywhere, uh, security agents, you know, the prosecuting agencies should go all the way and, you know, unveil the identities of these criminal elements, you know, who are 
siphoning the Commonwealth of Nigerians you know, into private pockets and ensure that they are prosecuted and this is nipped in the bud mm. definitely and you know, fin finally mm. such that you know, Nigerians can begin to enjoy um, you know, their Commonwealth. Have these men been court-martialed? At, at, at least I think... We don't even that's know them. Been, that's, that's, been, that's the first line for, you know, officials of the military. Have they been asked questions, you know? So if that collusion is, uh, you know, there, I think it is safe to say. Also, but, you know, just, just to, suffice to say that they are criminal elements, according to the chief of naval staff, and not um, official... Um, officers like you know, you know, oil companies and all of that, because um, that would mean if we say oil companies are involved, that would mean that the federal government is aware that these things are happening, and they are the federal government is literally collaborating, aiding and abetting by turning the blind eye. So we're we're, we're hoping. That well, we'll not reach those conclusions. <laughs> no, yet, exactly. But so, we have our suspicions. Well, we can suspect, but without proof, we can't prove. You know. So and and that is that is that is the thing. So. Uh, let's hope that as a nation we'll, we'll be able to come up with a completely different resolve to ensure that these things don't happen. And that's just one. That's the oil sector. Um, which day was it that we were hearing that the House of Representatives is asking the chief or oh, chief accountant, the, 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 I don't know, is it an auditor general or the accountant general of the Federation asking the fellow questions uh, uh, concerning uh, money running into more than 900 million naira. I'm just, sometimes I'm abashed when we mention these figures. Such amount. We just, and then we haven't even completed the conversations around that of the former chief accountant or accountant general, general of, of, the of the Federation, who is also said to be asking questions. I go back, Bukola, to one of my favorite topics, which sadly so, you know, is, is a topic I talk about all the time, which is the auditor general's Office, report. the Auditor General's report, all through the years. So no action has been taken at all? Good morning, Abuja. Yeah, good morning, guys. Uh, welcome to our studios in Abuja. And I have to say Merry Christmas to everyone out there. Because it's uh, Friday. I mean, the next time you see some of us may be on... Um, Monday or thereabouts, <laughs> you know, you never know, but it's... Uh, uh, I'm single. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know when the African mother says that, hmm, uh, you know that you're going to be in trouble if she doesn't see you on Monday. Anyways, good morning and uh, welcome to the program. I'm Mark Welgo Yusuf. Well, 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 what do we know? Oh. And, uh, you know, they were t t talking about crude oil theft. Yeah. Uh, you know, very interesting conversation that they have. But before we go into crude oil theft, Buki, you're totally killing the Christmas look this morning. Um, I was wondering in my head, I was like, <laughs> if I was going to wear red in our studio in Lagos, I mean, how, how am I going to do that? Because the studio is already Christmassy by its, by its very own theme. It's red all around. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Buki, creativity just... Spot on this morning, <laughs> you're killing this look. So Thank she, she has my allowance to kill it because CBN has given her an allowance. So, you know, you could, you could withdraw more. Please, now. just you keep know what that you and your CBN conversation and let Bookie enjoy her compliments this morning. What, what is Christmas without... You without, you without ego. What, what, what is Christmas? <laughs> Anyways, truly, what is Christmas without money? Uh, but not the kind of money is that we're hearing being stolen, oh. being siphoned away, being yeah. deliberately sabotaged from our economy uh, and even acknowledged right now by no less than the chief of naval, naval staff. Mm -hmm. I think, as Buki pointed out, it is a courageous admittance. The question yeah. is, what are you going to do about it? Uh, if, there's any com if it's any comfort for him, it is that this, this theft preceded his own um, tenure as chief of naval staff. This mm -hmm. is something that has been going on for the longest of times, I remember, you know, growing up as a teenager and hearing that an entire ship went missing in Nigeria, off Nigeria shores. We're looking for it. Wow. A ship. I can't remember the name of the ship, you know, but I remember then wondering as a young person, you know, ship. That's why this is where we understand the true meaning of the word. Wonders never cease. It's in <laughs> no, this country. This type of wonders need to cease. This is already <laughs> the end of 2022. 
Oh, well, uh, you know, entering 2023, this type of wonders where one person will own 115 houses, you know, and all the 105 billion naira is missing from a federation account. These types of wonders need to cease, Chamberlain. It's really uh, sad. And I think that, you know, it starts from acknowledging first that there is a problem. I remember that the, the interview that Ladia Keridolu Ali had with uh, the chief of naval staff. And I remember him asking him questions about crude oil theft specifically. Mm -hmm. And the chief was saying that it was not possible for people to bring in the kind of boats they claim, the kind of boats which, which could account for the sort of theft, you know, which we were experiencing at the time. Uh, but he left a lot of questions. If you are wondering about it, you can watch that interview again. But for him to come around and say that, you know, members of staff, mm -hmm. people within, uh, you know, the organization, uh, soldiers are involved in this. It's really nothing new, but for him to have that courage to admit it yeah. uh, means that perhaps they're ready to do something about it. So the big question is, what will be done about it? What changes can we expect to see? We're already beginning to see changes anyway, uh, right now, especially with the contract that was given to uh, for my, yes, I'm trying to remember the name of his Government company. Mpolo. No, name of the company. Uh, I know it's, it's uh, a Tarantino, so that's the name of the company I'm, that got I'm the contract. I'm not the name of the person. <laughs> You're know, fine, right? You know the name. I suppose. Anyway, the name of the company. <laughs> so they're doing. They're doing. They seem to be doing some job, and you know, the the the, the uh, crude oil production is ramping up. But hey. We can do so much more. We, there's a time in this country where we're aiming for 2 million barrels, yeah. 2.1 million barrels uh, from our budget. Why can't we maximize the profits, especially now that crude is, is in very high demand? And, you know, the, 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 the price of crude is something that, that is appreciating on the market. So, I don't know. Let, let us hope that 2023 will provide another start uh, for us to look again at the security architecture, especially those that tend to compromise the economy, you know, bordering on economic sabotage. And let us hope that it won't just be talk, but plenty of action would also be seen in that direction. Well, several questions. I mean, can NMPC actually tell Nigerians that all of those crews were being stolen without their knowledge? Is that really possible? I mean, look at Nate's report. $2.77 trillion lost in 2019. Sorry, billion dollars lost in 2019 owing to this crude oil theft. Anyway, the um, uh, NSA set up a committee on crude oil theft. So they already, we already have an idea of what we expect to see in that report as a result of this uh, chief of naval staff's submission and comment that some of the personnel are still involved in crude oil theft. Mm. So we expect names from uh, NSA's committee, which, by the way, will be ready uh, a few days to the elections. I believe it's also out of embarrassment that, the, that the, <laughs> the contract was, or will I say the Navy, is now no longer entrusted with looking at the pipelines in the Niger Delta, but mm. instead... I will give it to private individuals. Exactly. Wow. Okay, um, we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the dailies here today for you. I'll take a look at New Telegraph, that uh, the very first we've got here today, and it's got to do with the budget. I mean, who would have thought that this kind of headline will be the headline for this, how many years now? Seven years plus of this government, and look at that. Presidential errors, in parentheses, stall passage of 2023 budget. Can you beat it? Oh boy. I mean, NAS fixes December 28th for passage. Senate considers 2022 finance bill. Buhari receives 2021 PSE's audited reports. 2023 budget proposal. I guess alongside that one. And then FG moves to reorganize, rename FIRS. Hmm. Reps urge CBN banks to ensure prompt remittance of international students' school fees to avoid deportation. And this is a thing that's gone on several times. Lots of students have been embarrassed uh, from different... I mean, you, there are those of them from the uh, 
um, Niger Delta fund, something like that, who always reach out to us that they've not been paid, they've been stranded, and hopefully they will accede to this call. But how presidential era stall passage of 2023 budget, it's unbelievable. Uh, look at what you see at the bottom strip, even though, uh, yeah, redesigned currency. I also don't think that we're also missing out on his touch of Christmas this morning. You also have your allowance. <laughs> I, uh, no thanks to CBN. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> it's a, CBN orders for 500 million Naira new notes. So it will be um, the Christmas or Christmassy with... Um, there needs to be some awareness though. I mean, some videos this, have right? been making the rounds about how market women are not conversant with the new notes and are Ooh. rejecting it. Wow. Uh, you know, that in some instances, there's a fight. I mean, I, I'm, I do not know how seriously those videos can be taken, but if they're depicting true situations, then, you know, the NOA uh, needs to partner with the CBN and there needs to be a lot of awareness, especially since these notes are just, they're not totally redesigned, they're just recolored. So, oh yes, I mean, there needs to be some awareness by the you know general populace that uh -huh. this is what the new currency looks like, and then they should be able to spot a counterfeit from an original. Well, we'll hope they will be able to do that because the time frame was a thing. Several people wondered how all of this. Remember, some members of the House of Reps and Senate also mentioned that look, there are several people just in where I like to call hinterland. Mm -hmm. uh, and they don't have access to all of this. It takes time before messages get across to them, the reality of our time. But look at some of the writers here. It says it will be flexible on cash withdrawal limits, 300 trillion Naira e-transfers, transactions as at October 2022, 900,000 POS terminals nationwide. I wonder how many of those transactions failed if they have the data to help us understand what's going on. But that's New Telegraph today. Well, the so big talk on the budget on the front page of The Guardian for you this morning. Lawmakers' constituency projects delay 2023 budget. <laughs> that's the reason they're citing. Uh, I think we saw something about presidential errors. Mm -hmm. uh, but this one says lawmakers' constituency projects delay 2023 budget. Senate fixes December 28 for passage of appropriation bill. So they're going to be working to almost the end of the year. Um, in this instance, page six will give you all of the details. They also have uh, like a special on the US Africa Leader Summit. And they say, beyond the symbolism, a catch up race with China. Uh, that is also there. 2023, immediately affirms CBS neutrality state's benefits of policies uh page six read for you a number of other uh stories just beneath the <laughs> beneath the headline i'll be beg your pardon beneath the nameplate look at that mba sues minister of women affairs mm -hmm. colin tallon over kangaroo current just Ooh. in case you're wondering what that is about read it on page three of the paper i remove petrol subsidy to noble vows at business lunch okay is that going to be a policy of the party? Uh, I don't know. Page 7 is where you find details. Obey Supreme Court order on Soku oil field by Elsa tells Ramfak. And uh, this last one. Airlines operators risk imprisonment fines for non-remittance of sales charges. But in the meantime, is there anyone who's keeping an eye on what is happening at the airport at this time? Uh, because you know that because the airports are going to be very busy and we also know that there's plenty of um, movement in this season. Sometimes airlines disappoint. Is there any table, uh, any desk anywhere where when people suffer whatever disappointments they suffer, uh, you know, somebody can easily address their concerns. Um, yesterday I got a, an emergency call from a viewer of this program. And we need to do something about the airport. Somebody just, they just took them on a flight and they left all of their luggage in Lagos. Whoa. Yes. Yeah, so what am I supposed to do with that? My, the things I actually came to come and do where I'm traveling to, the luggage is left in Lagos. How am I supposed oh, to? Oh, dear. So, you know. It's terrible. Exactly. I, I'm hoping that, you know, fan 
Servicom will be living up to their responsibilities, will be living up to their duties at this time where people need to experience service. And not just those two, I think the Federal Consumer Protection Council, mm -hmm. trying to remember the acronym now, it can be a bit confusing. But yeah, Mr. Irukera seems to have been doing a fine job there. We want to see them more yeah. in these places where co consumers and customers uh, could be shortchanged and left powerless. They shouldn't be. There should be somebody who they can complain to and get their issues addressed. And from there, let's flip to this Nigeria and take a look at some of the, the big stories, particularly this one uh, that uh, the paper chooses to lead with. NAS, that's the National Assembly, halts 2023 budget passage over multiple errors, blames executive for submitting 40 documents to reconsider clean copy for passage December 28. So there you have it, Mark, where it's not just about, um, you know, uh, reps constituency projects there are possibly some other you know outstanding areas that need to be looked into so uh, between now and december 20th let's hope that all of that will be resolved such that we can have you know an appropriation year starting on day one january the first but more importantly the budget performance to, for 2022 uh, let's hope it's above average considering that uh, just yesterday we heard that you know, there's a supplementary budget that is being requested for. Uh, from there, let's take a look at uh, this one just beside the nameplate. Uh, everyone's Naira. Everyone is concerned about their Naira. Naira shortage. CBN to print additional 500 million notes, I believe this is, is supposed to be. It's captioned in, on other papers as 500 million new notes. So we hope that by the new year, we'll get the crispy new notes in our hands. I, I visited the ATM, you know, for the first time after a, a number of days yesterday, and what I got is still the old notes. I was still, I was disappointed. I was expecting to get at least, you know, if it's not the 1,000 naira, perhaps the 200 naira uh, denominations. You all are going to have to be patient. Yeah. Right? But the Bado guys are getting it. The, the motorcyclists are getting the new notes. Well, he said he didn't want it. <laughs> <laughs> and they don't, but we want it and we're not getting it. Well, by the way, Chamberlain, thank you very much for that one. I don't know if the same thing happened in, um, what's that community in Umo State? I don't know. Well, but... I don't know. I don't know about that. <laughs> okay, let's look at some more stories before we exit um, this Nigeria. Take a look at this one. Politics is in the air. Atiku's border reopening pledge, unfortunate. That's ascribed to the federal government. And just below the, uh, that one, you see these are the two. Tinubu insists on fuel subsidy removal. That's a fa page five read. And uh, lastly, crude oil theft. Of course, we've talked about that. CNS fingers Navy personnel. You find details there uh, in page 18. And this sad one, let me just add this one. Com commuters killed as 40 feet container crushes vehicles in Lagos. Very, very sad. We've been talking about that. It's an unlatched, uh, it wasn't like the vehicle itself overturned, fell, overturned it's or anything. It's the container, it's the container that is not probably it, keyed into the that, flatbed. That was not, you know, uh, you know, tied or whatever English word you want to use to the, and they, it's a heavy one. People have gotten killed. How do those things leave their locations? Don't they have their SHE experts or whatever it is that they call them in their different organizations that get these things done mm -hmm. and ensures that there is safety the standards, safety standards, safe, safety standards are, are across board and all of that. So yeah. I don't know. So I, I don't think that should just be another flash in the pan of a story. I would just allow to report it and then just allow it to go like that. Uh, no. And you know, I know that that also this issue has diverse implications. You know. For instance, those that have been killed, the company that owns the you know, uh, vehicle should take responsibility Most by certainly. paying compensation Most to certainly. families. But I, I doubt that we've ever seen anything like that in that, the years that we've experienced that, accidents as a result of you know, articulated vehicle turning over. That driver needs to be asked serious questions if it's not prosecuted. prosecuted. That company or organization or wherever it was that the fellow came from, mm -hmm. 
the people around there should be asked serious questions because these things cannot just con- we can't just continue to allow these things to to, to happen it's, it's criminal the daily times newspaper this morning has this one on its front page of course still talking about the national assembly failing to pass the 2023 budget uh, look at the writers senate blames executive for errors in appropriation bill passage of 2022 supplementary budget finance bill affected uh oh reps to pass 2023 appropriation bill after christmas well, I, 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 I'd like to know the details that we have on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. Is it this, are these errors that the, the Senate is querying, are they concerning the uh, constituency projects alone or it's something across board? We, we, it'll, it'll be good to find out. So you can read the details also on the uh, front page of the Daily Times continues on the inside pages. Right under the picture, Buhari receives PSC audited report that shows of improved police welfare. We look forward to that. It was one of those issues that the NSAS movement was about, police welfare. Find the details on page two. Right above the nameplate, Nigeria risks being blacklisted by global finance bodies over DSS allegations against the Mefiele. Oh, really? Look at the rider as British MP flays attempt by DSS to frame CBN governor for trumped up terrorism charge. That's a serious indictment, but find the details continue on the inside pages. At the bottom of the page, military on red alert as Nigerians seek a peaceful Christmas on Sunday. Sincerely, we have to celebrate our military personnel who, among others though, but particularly military personnel, Among others, security particularly personnel. Particularly if you have the Nigerian Navy on your mind this morning. No, 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 no. Some Ge- officials Just the generally, Navy. who do not go on holiday while we sleep with our two eyes closed. Kudos to every single one of you. We know that there are bad eggs, but bad eggs cannot be as many as the very, very fantastic people doing awesome and, work and for the fatherland. And we can't generalize, uh-uh. but we must celebrate them for sacrificing their lives daily for being on the front line mm-hmm. tackling insurgency tackling even internal insurrection mm-hmm. we can't talk enough about how they are overwhelmed you know by the weight of responsibility to ensure that you know the territorial integrity of the country is defended and of course you know law and order is maintained mm-hmm. on the domestic front as well so well done members of the nigerian uh, armed forces that's the Daily Times newspaper today. Well, I add my voice to that uh, commendation for the Nigerian Armed Forces and also other security agencies working day and night to ensure that we're safe. And I know that one of the ways you can celebrate them this season is to get a poppy. I don't know where you can get it. I got this one at the airport. I'm hoping that there'll be many more areas where, you know, this will be available, but if you do see wherever it is you see maybe in churches i know that sometimes they go to places of worship churches mosques wherever it is you see do spare a thought and bring out something from your pocket and wear it about it is one way you can show appreciation a look at this leadership friday uh, is what i'm looking at for you this morning at lagos luncheon rivers rally that's two separate events tinubu ob speak to issues underscore governance plans <clears throat> excuse me that's the elite story this morning i'll convert nigeria's challenges to opportunities says apc presidential candidate our run government of youths women according to obi don't waste time on tinubu atiku tells pmb or uh, maybe that's something uh, a retort to what the president said yesterday that he's ready to campaign for tinubu with conviction well, page four will give you all of the details, maybe also providing extra context to, you know, what uh, the vice president or the presidential candidate of the PDP is talking about. And look at this. No amount of threat will stop 2023 elections. Federal government vows. Uh, the page seven reads, so for all those wondering whether or not the elections will hold, they certainly will. That's what the federal government is saying. So I think we can hold them to their word. And uh, I will unveil my presidential candidate in January, attributed to Vicky. 
You know, he's been holding the cards very closely to his chest. He's still commissioning projects in Port Harcourt and always seizes the opportunity to, you know, speak about politics, speak to politics. Um, he's hosted presidential candidates in his state. He's promised to give them logistics support. And with the frac, well, will I say fraca now, or with the um, misunderstanding still going on within their party, there's questions as to will he be supporting the presidential candidate of the PDP in, uh, you know, supporting him within his state and, and, and campaigning for him. Hold on to January. It's just a few days away. That's what he says. I will unveil my presidential candidate in January. That's uh, from Wiki. You also find here a number of other stories. Illegal abortions. Report vindicates army. Fingers foreign NGO. It's a paid six read. You might want to take a look at that story. Uh, that was something I was really disturbing that came um, from a foreign news agency about the Nigerian military. And there have been questions as to whether there was any truth to that report. Um, the federal government has since dismissed it as fake news. But well, details on page six, I do know that they were asked to submit themselves to the uh, Human Rights Commission, the National Human Rights Commission, for an investigation. Could it be the report that is out? Flip to page six of Leadership Friday. Kaduna emerges best performing state in World Bank's Anrin project. Uh, it's a page 12 read. Maybe no surprises there. Doing pretty okay in some basic governance um, issues, health, education. Kaduna really has put its money where its mouth is. Page 12 will give you details there. Seven Uni Abuja lecturers get one billion Naira research grants. So our lecturers still doing great things in spite of the current situation in our tertiary institutions. Still you know, putting in the work and getting the monies that they should get for their research work. Cash withdrawal limit, Naira redesign, not political. That's according to the Central Bank of Nigeria. Never mind what the president says <laughs> about whether or not politicians will have money, but CBN says, hey, it's not political. I guess we'll have to leave it there. Oh, just before I leave, uh, well, before we leave the leadership newspapers, I, I mean to say, if you flip to the back page, well, one of my favorite um, uh, editors is writing on the back page, Conversation with Azu, Western hypocrisy loses in epic Qatar match. That's what he is writing about this morning. So it's not over until it's over for the World Cup. Let's leave it there for Leadership Friday. And Daily Trust, you know, leads with the, the immediate past story that you highlighted before the back page. And that's about, you know, the big Naira concern. Cash withdrawal limit, reps to insist on policy reversal. And the riders go this way. Wamako once immediately sacked policy, not politically motivated, ascribed to the CBN. And 500 million pieces of notes Printed. Well, we need clarity on that one. Will they be printed? Uh, is the CBN just certain about printing those notes or they've already been printed? I think a lot more clarity about, you know, the gray, gray areas of the new notes should be provided, especially where you have those, you know, who are rejecting the new Naira notes, i.e. market women and, you know, Okada riders. A lot more education needs to be done. Uh, I believe that we should have a public relations desk or a media desk at the Central Bank of Nigeria. There's so much that needs to be done, so much education that needs to go around, particularly for uh, those who are not as literate as they should be, such that, uh, you know, the implications of the redesign will be properly understood. First of all, the, the word out about the redesign wasn't sufficient for them. That's one way that one can look at it. People are not even aware mm -hmm. for 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 people at that level to reject brand new naira notes, redesigned naira notes. It says a lot, a whole lot, that 
the confirm information has not percolated where do they where can we reach them where are they located which media platform serves them best those are questions to answer you know each time we talk about you know the rural nigeria we talk about urban nigeria we talk about micro small and medium enterprise that's where nigeria is mm -hmm. so if those mm -hmm. people are not aware a lot of questions need to ask yeah uh, to be asked uh, of the cbn and please don't put this on the media and and this you know brings to mind one of the ways or the st strategies that can be adopted to you know promoting uh, information about the new naira notes is you know communication a media campaign mm. in all languages absolutely yeah that what can go around the market women and your cadre riders those that need to understand particularly those that deal with the exchange of notes every day that Absolutely. don't do transactions with their mobile devices. Well, let's take a look at uh, some other stories on the front page of Daily Trust this morning. Uh, was it Daily Trust now? Yes, it is Daily, Daily Trust. 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 Okay. Look at the screen. Cash withdrawal. It's yes, a lot of money. Ca cash withdrawal. I'm, I'm very interested in that yes, one. Yes, very interesting. All right. Uh, this one, uh, just at the bottom strip, Ambassador Shehu Malami, uh, the prince from Sokoto, uh, buried in Sokoto uh, yesterday. Uh, you remember one of the papers highlighted his uh, uh, demise and he's been buried according to Islamic rights. Above, just beneath the nameplate now, we have these stories. First, with this one, military probes killing of civilians in Zamfara airstrikes. Murik accuses Lagos principal of forcefully removing students' hijab. There we are. We're not quite done with, you know, the back and forth over the appropriate dressing for students in our schools. We'll see how that one goes. And lastly, this one, NPAN, NGE, urge um, Arise TV APC campaign council to sheath sword uh, that uh, conflict as a result of some certain communication that the party was not quite satisfied with is about is yet to settle. We hope that is resolved as uh, soon as possible, particularly uh, ahead of the coming uh, elections. Let's leave it there now for Daily Trust. Nigerian News Direct has this one on its front page. It is strict to politics. You, you'll find it right there. It's talking about 2023 elections. APC, PDP, trade words over incessant attacks on INEX facilities. Stories on page two. And one of my favorite constituencies, youth, is also in the news. Youth, not oil, Nigeria's economic mainstay. That's coming from Governor Abiodo. Find the details on the inside pages of the paper today. And right above the nameplate, you find Adelike's forensic examiner confirms overvoting in Oshun governorship election. Exactly what does that mean? What are the implications? The details of that you will also find um, on the inside pages. I hope to God that we're not going to have that kind of situation um, in, in in different parts of the country because I remember seeing a report where some fellow analyzed some things during the uh, voter voter registration display of INEC that you know um, voters registered in certain localities uh, have been greatly um, What's the word now? Exaggerated from maybe say some less than nine thousand, less than ten thousand in the previous election, the previous general election, to almost fifty thousand now. And so there are a number of questions to ask about that. Although INEC is saying, look, help us clean up the register. We can't go to INEC servers. We can only raise the flag. So let's hope that these things don't happen at all. Well, that's the Nigerian News Direct this morning. And that's the much of the papers we can look at for this morning. But don't go away. The 2023 elections is one of those issues I will be talking about, as well as what you should do to stay responsible in the Yuletide. Stay with us. A busy side on the outbound section of the lagos Badu Expressway especially in the early hours of the day, suggest that many are already leaving Lagos to other parts of the country for the Yuletide celebrations. 
but the outlook at Jibou, one of the major hubs for interstate road travel, suggests otherwise. Patronage of transport companies and influx of travelers, often noticed, are low. By this time last year, the numbers of people who want to travel is small, but this time it has reduced drastically. So I think it's because maybe one, the security, and two, maybe the economic situation. During this kind of season, it takes at least 20 minutes. It should be full because the passengers, the numbers of people coming are more. But uh, right now, you can see people are still waiting. The time is, the sun is out and the people, passengers are not coming. The same situation applies to a Wena motor park in Ojota. The activities here are skeletal, with only few passengers on ground. We've been here since uh, 6 30. This is the second bus leaving this, the park this month. Like, it will leave about 8 39, you know. And I think that's another one loading. But we're just going to our village, I mean, to our town all the time, not minding the expenses and not minding the situation. Even the kidnappers will never stop us because we know how to handle them. Compared to the previous years, by now a lot of people will have, will have, will have been on transit. But you can see the empty buses in there. So that's to tell you that the movement is, the turnout is so low. So because they, like the early in the morning, like 5, 6, it's all relative as this. So people are not really traveling. While some travelers have resolved to stay back in the cities to celebrate quietly, others are determined to travel home against all odds. And that's our first take this morning. Things you need to do uh, during the Yule title remain safe. Not too long ago, the secretary to the government, uh, to the government, to, to SGF, uh, wow, how that skips me at this moment, I don't remember. The government uh, of the Federation. Secretary of the government of the Federation, thank you, Bukola. So, well, there was that meeting with the uh, co marshal the acting co marshal and he said he, she, he charged the service, the commission, to make this year's experience seamless for commuters, especially during the Yuletide, to achieve this. He said that they have to clearly set targets and engage stakeholders, including construction companies and various state governments, to deliver on this mandate. How that has uh, been cascaded down to Lagos State, we'll hear from the sector commander, FRC in Lagos, Olusha Gumide. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, yours is perhaps one of the toughest jobs, especially <laughs> at, this, at this period in the whole yeah. of the nation, having to deal with commuters uh, in, a com in a population of about 20 million. Well, maybe yeah. you and uh, the Kano State, your Kano State counterpart might be having yeah. that, that challenge. How has that been in recent time? Well, uh, I would say I'd rather start by saying we are already tested. Because <laughs> uh, when you look at um, the setup of the... Uh, system that's federal safety call management that before you are posted to Lagos or some other states in the federation uh, one of the qualities is uh, this familiarity with the terrain which goes a long way to actually fortify you for the job you know for a while I have been around I was once the head of operation at Badagri Mm. One's a unit commander, Lagos Island, and Zona Public Enlightenment Officer at uh, the headquarters. So if you want to look at the senatorial zone, I would say I've uh, really <laughs> tested the, the three senatorial zones. So having been posted to Lagos as a sector commander, I have a vivid idea of what is expected of me, mm. and we hit the ground running. So the familiarity really assisted in knowing what to do at a particular time and the expected results. And that's how we've been carrying on. So talking about particular time, the Yuletide is one such peculiar. Yes. And it, it would seem like, for those who may not know, if you can just do this in about 30 to 45 seconds, okay. what especially makes the Yuletide peculiar? Yes, there's heavy vehicular traffic. People yeah. move around a lot. I was having a conversation with a friend yesterday. I was saying, look, why do we have to have heavy traffic during the, the youth time when the year is ending? Uh, it's not just peculiar to Nigeria as a nation. It is a worldwide thing that um, 
you you left your people from January and uh, for maybe for those that traveled out of the country, for those that have their, you know, a means of livelihood away from their community. And they always target that towards the end of the year, we we'll just need to go back home to realign with our people. And you also agree with me by virtue of our tradition. Most of the ceremonies we run as Africans is always towards the end of the year when we have the belief that there's going to be convergence of virtually all the siblings and family members. So every, every direction is always towards December. So it's been, it's been a tradition over the years. That's why I say it's a national, it's a worldwide thing. Because as we are talking here in Nigeria, the same feelers is also being received from the Western world mm -hmm. all over the places. Mm -hmm. So it's just a human thing that at the end of the year, we have to get back to our roots. And beyond December, you know, I know this FRC is noted for its campaign about the Ember yes. Months and awareness about how Ni Nigerians have to be responsible in terms of travel, uh, you know, at, at attentiveness to their vehicles, functionality and all of that. How significantly different has this year, 2022, been? Have you witnessed a reduction in accidents as a result of your campaign over the years? Um, when you look at um, the theme for each year's campaign is a product of the research we've carried on over the years or right from the previous years. And uh, for this year, our campaign is, you know, avoid speeding, avoid overloading and have safe tires for, for you to arrive alive. And uh, for us to have gotten to this stage is an indication that we've had series of crashes in the past as a result of speeding. That when you have a crash as a result of speeding, you know that definitely is going to be fatal. And uh, the effect of overloading too on safety on our roads, before we now mention the issue of tires. And these are the things we have managed over the years. And for us to have specifically picked on this theme for this year is because we know the implication. And I will not deceive you, it has paid off. Because uh, by virtue of the policies that have been put in place, so the way I rate the impact of her policies is what will have happened if these policies have not been put in place? Judging from the issue of speeding, uh, we introduced the policy of a uh, speed limit device because we know with a wide and vast road network, there's no way FRC can do route lining on all the roads to come speed. That's why we said why we are not there there must be something with you that will curtail you. That was what brought about the issue of speed limit device, that you cannot go beyond the regulated speed when you're on these categories of road. And it has really assisted in reducing the rate of road traffic crashes compared to where we're coming from. And when you also look at the role the safe to load concept has played, safe to load is in the past, when we're doing traditional way of road safety, we go about pursuing tankers and trailers on our highways. Eventually, in the course of trying to solve a problem, you create more complex problems. Because if you imagine me running after a, mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. tanker that is loaded with 45,000 liters of oil, and the man deliberately or by omission gets involved in a crash, you know the implication. So the essence of safe to load is we should be able to meet them at the basis. Where do they normally load from? Okay. We insist that before you load, you must meet up with a minimum safety standard. In Lagos alone, an average of 350 tankers are loaded daily. That's for fuel? For fuel, yes. How so about for, other, for, for other, cargo. So you how, go to how about other? Yes, we go to the various Sorry. depots. We have our operatives. Not that we go, we are stationed there how about at the various other, depots. Other locations, other uh, you know, facilities where they load stuff like drinks and stuff like that. There was an accident, that you, I'm, I'm sure you are aware of that accident, where a, a what's that, the, the, you read this That's one. where I'm, I'm headed now. Okay. Commuters killed as 40 feet container crushes vehicles yes. in Lagos. Exactly. And that's just one out of several that have been witnessed, particularly on Lagos Ibadu Expressway yes. in recent times. Uh, when you say in recent time, I want to beg to, to disagree. Because if you look at where we're coming from, virtually every day, you see issues of crashes involving tankers, involving containers falling on people. And that was what brought about the policy of lashing and twist locking. What we witnessed yesterday 
it's quite unfortunate that we had to lose a life. Before now, we've been having these issues of containers, maybe due to bad road and misconduct of the drivers happening. But lives have not really been lost because of a policy. The event of yesterday will have been more devastating if not for the policy of making sure that the container is twist locked or lashed. So it you was. Know, it, pardon? It was. It was. Yes, it was. So, you know. You know. If you if you watch the if you watch the the video the picture of that truck, the container is still with the truck, only that it fell on that vehicle, which the preliminary investigation confirmed that it was a misconduct or recklessness of the driver. But, but, but Sector Commander, I, I travel on Lagos Ibadan Expressway yes. a whole lot, and I see a lot of these articulated vehicles. The containers are not well keyed. They're not even keyed into the flatbeds. You know, and I just have to tell uh, my driver to relax and not compete with any of the articulated vehicles. So how effective is this safe-to-load um, policy you know, that you have talked about? I have taken time to monitor the activities of the men personally. What plays out, I want you to get it right away now, because we also get to know, we were worried too, if with all the effort put in place, we still have windows of escape. We still see some of these vehicles outside, not, you know, twist locked or lashed. We now realize that the various points, because you are talking of the windows that load from the ports now, where we have our operatives, both the wharf and the tin can. Before you can pull out, you must be twist locked. So what do they do? When they use that same concept to move out of the pot, they get to a bonded terminal and transload to another vehicle, which, you know, escape the window of the, the, the bring, high, bring high of those that were monitoring them at the port. So we now decided, I've been having collaboration with VIS now, that we have to extend our higu high beyond the ports now to the bonded terminals. Okay. I will not still disprove the fact that it cannot be a perfect system. That's why we have our operatives along the line. Okay. Now, Lagos Ibadan Corridor, we have more than, more than five commands lined up along that corridor. So if you escape in Lagos, you cannot escape at Moe. So, so is it a national policy? Do you find it across all the 36 states of the Federation? Yes, it's a, it's a national, yes, it's a national policy. Anywhere you have loading being, being uh, taking place, either wet cargo or dry cargo, our operatives are there. The, the major line of interest, per se, well, you find them more at Port Harcourt because we have a port there and Lagos. And we still have them distributed in all other ports that are operating. And the other one that has assisted that is more like it is the one we call RTSS, Road Transport Safety Standardization Scheme. It's a scheme that came up in 2009 that our whole system was not regulated. And it was all commerce affairs. And that's why we're having a series of crashes. Nobody talks about the maintenance of the vehicle. Nobody talks about the status of the drivers. And the operators are not bothered. So what RTSS came to checkmate has to do with what is the status of the drivers? You must be held accountable for the drivers you employ to work in your service. The man that had that problem yesterday must be produced by the owner of that vehicle. The system has, has commenced. It can only run, it can't run forever because until we decide to take responsibility for our misbehavior and misconduct on the highway, we'll continue to be you know, business as usual. But okay. I think the narratives has changed. Mm. And the second one is that you must be able to account for the type of vehicles you are putting on the road, while the third one is the operator. What provisions, what facilities do you, have you put in place for the comfort of your drivers? Mm. Does this, no. I believe that this spreads to corporate organizations as well. Majorly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because the, 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 the concept says any establishment, fleet operators that has more than four, five vehicles, in their fleet must be registered okay. under that now, policy. I'd like you to speak to capacity now. You said your men are deployed across the highways, you know, but um, how much, you know, can you afford to do that to the extent that emergencies can happen at any time? They can yes. happen, you know, yeah, at well, night. Yeah. How swiftly can the commission respond in case we have, you know, an emergency that occurs around midnight? Yes, um... Let me start uh, from the 
the, the tracking process, all our patrol vehicles are tracked. So anywhere the vehicle is, from the headquarters, they know the location. And technology has really played a very germane role here. That when you call 122, it eats Abuja. And the location of that crash, the nearest either the command or if station patrol vehicle gets to that place. That's why we boast of 15 minutes response time to any crash that will call. But there's even an improvement. We call it National Post Crash Care Initiative. That's the first responders that we have them. Now, they are not members of Federal Safety Corps. They are just, you know, volunteers that are willing to assist. We've been able to build their capacity. That's what we're busy doing over the, the month towards achieving what we intend to achieve this end of the year. What role are they playing? That artisan that you see by the roadside, that organizer that uh, one selling my the right, has been trained by FRC. He's been taught on the rudiments of you know, assessing victims. He has two major roles to play. As he's attending to that person, it's also he has sent signal to us. You know, you can be everywhere, mm. and information is what we operate with. Okay. A crash could happen by your doorstep. If you are not informed, you might not even know. Mm. And that's the role they play. So the moment the crash will call close to where they're operating, they call us. So they're like first responders. First responders, that's okay. what they are. Okay. So they move straight to the scene to apply first aid, you know, on the victims while we are coming with a larger rescue team. And that is what has really paid off. Okay. But as regards response time, FRC has gotten it perfect. Okay. Uh, let's speak to, because I know that our time will soon be off. Let's, let's speak to those who were traveling in their private vehicles. Yes. Uh, you talked about the tires the other time. Let me just, re, you know, quickly say this. There are people who, who don't know that their tires can expire. Mm -hmm. Please ex educate. Yes. Well, when we still talk about these tires, if you are still a road user or a driver in Nigeria today, that you don't know that tire expires is an indication that you are quite insensitive because we've overflogged this issue for a long, so many years now. The, you, if you the, look the at issue your is tire, dead, so. <laughs> if you look at your tire, for you to know whether it's expired or not, we all know that the expiration time of tires is four years. You see four figures inside the box. It's well carved out. I think the manufacturers have assisted us in this regard. Mm. It's well carved out. Four figures. The first two is the week, while the last two is the year. Assuming you have something like a 1220, it's an indication that that tire was manufactured 12th week. So if you want to divide it by four weeks per month, that's a March mm. 2020. So hard four to 2020. So definitely that tire expires 2024. So that is the way you can look at it. But it's not just about when the tire will expire. What about the usage? I picked up a tire and I don't go beyond Lagos. The same day with you that runs Lagos Meduguri. So naturally your tire will be out of place before mine. Mm. So it's either it's worn out or it's torn. So appropriately you have to change the tire. So essentially that, that's one of the things that the traveler Yes, they, they have trip. to consider. Okay, what, are, what other things should they pay attention to? Especially because many will be traveling in their private vehicles to, yes. go, to go home. Why we lay more emphasis on commercial vehicles is because we hold them that responsibility to yes, protect I, them. Yes, I know, but also protect the us. private. <laughs> because when you look at the face of your madam, <laughs> that's your speed limit device. <laughs> when you look at the face of your children, children you have in the vehicle, that's your speed limit device. Mm -hmm. It curtails you. But the driver that is driving commercial vehicle does not have a relationship with his own is the motive is yeah. let me drop them and make my money and run back. Mm -hmm. And that's what pushes whatever he tends to gain on that road. Mm -hmm. But let me just count it this way for all of us across the board that we should operate the principle of defensive driving. Mm. that says, in the course of your journey, you are going to encounter five enemies. So if you are leaving your home with that impression, you look out for the five enemies. The number one enemy is the vehicle that is going ahead of you. It could trafficate left and go right. I'm sure you must have witnessed that. Oh, Did I have some mind or what have you? 
And then also, what do you do? You give him the driving distance. Absolutely. About 16 meters. That's what the rule says. So that whatever misconduct he does, you can, you have enough space. All these tailgaters. That's why you see all these tailgaters are getting mean, problems. You mean the bumper to bumper? The bumper to bumper. <laughs> <laughs> so, and you don't know what the man ahead can do. He stops suddenly, then you find yourself under the trailer or whatever. Mm. The number two is the enemy. Number two enemy is the man that is coming at the rear. That's the man behind you. That's the essence of your inner mirror and side mirror. And I ask myself, an articulated vehicle without a side mirror, what does it do with inner mirror? Because mm. I've come across tankers, trailers without side mirror. Mm. And these are the people you share the road with. So when you have people like that on the road with you, you should know that you should be careful with them. They are enemies to you. So if he's coming behind you on top speed, mm. you have little time, stay off the road and allow him to pass. You've not lost anything. Your number three enemy is the one that is coming the other side. How do we have head on collusion? You ask yourself. The man just opened his eyes. He's not saying, when I'm driving on the road, I don't look at the vehicle. I look at the person inside the vehicle through the windscreen. You'll be so surprised that that man is either picking an item on the floor of the vehicle, or he's making call, or he's even dancing or chatting. We'll come to the music part. So you have to be conscious of what that man is doing. So what do you do? You place it. While you are driving, you are conscious that this guy could break all these barriers. Mm. They said he's a, a express. Have you not seen vehicles that break barriers and come to kill people at the other side? So you play, you prepare your mind in case he veers off. Who Where do you escape to? Who are the fourth and fifth enemy? The fourth are. enemy is what we call distraction. The handyman that crosses the road is an enemy. The man, the distraction that I don't want to mention it uh, because I don't want to be crucified. <laughs> There's people that are, you know, some men are not that disciplined. They said uh, they hit someone ahead. They said their legs slip off the tattoo. It's not. They got distracted by that lady. Mm. And you have distractions, orcas all over the places. Mm. Jump onto the main road because they were anxious to sell. And they create problem for you. Why the number five enemy is yourself. How did you wake up this morning? Are you in good health? And you know you are not sound and you have to proceed on that journey? Is it compulsory? Are you, have you, are you psychologically set? Are you cr just created a problem at home and you are proceeding to Abuja? I do have people at the park. If your driver is not set to, has not said to his wife at home, borrow him money to go and do that because that thing will haunt him on his trip. So in other words, his speed limit device is already faulty. He's faulty. <laughs> okay. So they, 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 you still talk of so many other mm. ones that you know it has to do with you. What's your parade? Okay, just a quick one, uh, one or two issues. Uh, Bukola was in asking a question the other time. She used the word accident. Yeah. I noticed that you avoided that word accident. You used yeah. the word crash. Crash, thank you. I know what it's about because we've talked about it for a, yeah. few, for a little while. You deliberately avoided that uh, word. So please educate, you know, Nigerians watching. What's the difference between an accident and a crash? If there's anything the FRS would have loved to achieve, is to revert back to the word accident, meaning that anything that happens on the road is outside, is beyond the man's, you know, control. Control. Yeah. That's an accident. Mm. But when you have an accident waiting to happen, it's no more an accident, it's a crash. Mm. You, you know that, oh, you are traveling to, to Maduguri with this tire that is already worn out. And you, you said it's an accident when, they, when you have tire bust, it's not an accident. You knew it's going to happen. You are going on 140 kilometers per hour on a road of, uh, of 80 kilometers per hour and you, you lost control and you said it's an accident. Accident means something that happens suddenly without our control. Mm. Why crash is the one that we expected, we prepared. Well, because mm. we didn't take because we didn't take, take yes. responsibility. Because what we call a crash is an omission or commission. Yeah. Something it that happened by both. virtue of what you failed to do or what you did wrongly. Yeah. So those are the, those are the two major causes of whatever infractions. Speak, we speak have on to our these own. two issues now. Let me quickly get it 
uh, them in before you know our time runs out. Um, you, you, you talked about the efficacy of some of your policies, you know, uh, implemented uh, to address the Ember Months uh, campaign. Yeah. So give us uh, specific figures now um, in terms of reduction of these crashes that you talk about. How significantly have they reduced as a result of your um, the, the, these policies that you have introduced? Yes. You know why I will not give you figure? We made one remarkable achievement in the recent time in line with United Nations uh, dictates that we never captured enough data when it comes to road traffic crashes in one of our outings. And we came back home and now expanded our source of data. That's FRSC is present in all local government today to pick data. So comparing what we have achieved now to what it used to be in the past, you could think there is an increase in road traffic crashes. What we have succeeded in doing is that we have more information now. So before we can do proper analysis of, uh, you know, comparative analysis of whether it has dropped or it's gone up, then we must have run some years where we know conveniently we can compare. But if like now comparing this year with last year, you might have the tendency to say, oh, the rate of crashes is still going up. But last year, I had less capture source. Uh, capture source. But one thing that is certain, as, as uh, someone that is within, I know that the role of all these policies have really played significant. So the core would impact. like to test the policies for a longer time before it, you can it turn has, out it, figures. It, it has, no, 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 that's not what I'm saying. What we, in the next two, three years, we should be able to, you know, actively give you the vivid result of all those policies. Mm. What they've assisted in achieving. I just told you one, morally. Okay. The crash of yesterday, that tanker will have, that container will have been thrown wholly on that bus with more than 10 people inside. But today, because of the twist locking policy that you must not move out of your location without twist locking, it falls along with the container, not throwing it. You remember Over. the incident of two years ago, the one that killed those two youths? The container was thrown on them. So you can't just throw it on them. You see that it's last or it's twist lock. So you go down because all over the world, crashes do occur. Mm. But what we are fighting against is that let there not be fatality. This is the second issue. I know you said uh, that uh, your response time is you know, 15 minutes uh, yes. after which you deploy and send in extra men you know, to ensure safety. I want to know why we're not seeing the impact of that. And I'm not talking just about Lagos Ibadu Expressway now okay. because you know, some would think that that's my new song. I'm talking about you know, across Lagos roads. Um, when you're traveling on, on other roads, if an emergency occurs, um, it, it, it leads to a traffic snarl and it tails back all the way. So why aren't we seeing the impact of that response time that you boast about? The best of Sweden is not just about the policy. It's about those that the policies are meant to assist. It takes two to tango. The, 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 the government can have the best policy, but without the cooperation of the citizen, you won't get the best out of it. The reason, the problem you just analyzed now is not because we are not there. It's because our people are not ready to share the burden of the occurrence on the road. That's what you suffered on Kara, Lagos Road. Construction has to be made. If we had all been willing and patient enough to share the burden, we wouldn't have spent more than one hour at most. But everybody happened to be in a hurry. When a crash will come, we we'll get there at the appropriate time. And naturally, it will take us time. What are the burdens you see, you encounter on the road when you travel? You see that you have passports that you need to apply quietly and come out. You see that there's an obstruction on the road that your priestess will have to remove. So all those things affect travel time for you. Sure. Yeah. Or there's a okay. crash. Or the motorists are driving against traffic. That's where I'm coming from. Okay. So this burden has to be shared by all of us. And that's where we are getting it wrong. The moment it occurs, you see people go inside the bush, going through the shoulders, and at the end of the day, they lock up the entire place. Mm. Well, uh, we began by talking about the need to circulate information to Nigerians so that we all, because I used the word, uh, can take um, 
full responsibility altogether. Yeah communal responsibility and it will not just be the job of the agency. For now, we have to thank you very much, uh, Mr. Olusha Gugumide, who is Sector Commander, FRSC in Lagos. Once again, thank you so much for being that. here this morning. We're back after now. Please stay with us. Since 2019, offices of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, across the country have been soft targets for hoodlums. This has caught the attention of Parliament, and with the general elections just around the corner, the House of Representatives has set up a committee to investigate the matter to forestall further attacks. The offices were destroyed nationwide during protests. Some of the protests have nothing to do with elections or by the activities of Boko Haram or bandits or unknown gunmen. So these attacks cannot be attributed in the main to election violence. If the suspect involved, belong to a particular camp, maybe the governor is in charge of that state and some of his uh, followers were arrested. You see a lot of pressure coming to us, pressure, pressure for release, for bail, for bail. Even when we deny bail, we charge to court. They go to the court and find a way and release their members. According to statistics from the electoral umpire, from 2019 till date, 50 incidents of attacks on INEC officers have been recorded in 15 states. The breakdown shows that in 2019, eight incidents from four states were recorded. The attacks on INEC officers hit an all-time high in 2020 following the NSARS protests as 22 incidents from nine states were recorded. In 2021, 12 incidents in seven states, while 2022 has so far recorded eight incidents in five states. They are Ogun, Oshun, Imo, Eboin, and Enugu states. While the INEC data attributes the incidents to hoodlums and unknown gunmen, the police say fingers point to secessionist agitators in the southeastern South South. And then the security guards that were employed as INEC are unarmed. So they the INEC chairman is concerned that the 2023 general elections may be affected. Should such attacks continue at the pace at which they are happening at the moment, the commission may find it increasingly difficult to recover in good time for the election. If it's about stopping the attacks, yes, we can recover. But if the attacks continue, it will be very difficult uh, for the commission to recover. Meanwhile, lawmakers are concerned that the attacks on INEC officers have continued because those arrested have not been prosecuted. They turn to the office of the Attorney General, which is saddled with the responsibility of prosecution, and are shocked by what they hear. As far as the office are concerned, we have not formally received any request for prosecution on that one. That, that is the content of our letter. But however, as soon as we receive, like all other prosecutions that are ongoing on. The prosecution that are ongoing? Yes. Uh, from which quarters did you receive the... Uh, the, the uh, we normally the receive the reports. Is it from with, INEC? Is it from no, no, police? DSS, is it from DSS, DSS, DSS. DSS. How many? There are many. I cannot give the figure exactly, but they are ongoing. And this ongoing ones are yes. related to the burning of INEC offices. Of course, yes. Some of yes, them are related. Yes. You are yes. contradicting yourself. You said you have. No, I'm not, I'm not trying to contradict. I'm just you saying that. Like, this yes. is your. Yes, submission. exactly. Yes. You it's your submission. Exactly. You agree with it. Exactly. Thank you. I am further directed to inform you that the request refer above this above this office is yet to receive any communication on the investigation reports from Office of the Independent National Electoral Commission or any security agencies that investigated the alleged attacks on the... This is, yes, yes. The electoral body on its part says it will continue to collaborate with security agencies, especially the Nigeria Civil Defense Corps, for improved protection of its facilities. Terry Ikumi, Channels Television News. All right, welcome back. Well, uh, just talking about some preparations for elections. We're joined now by Professor Sylvia Agu, who is the resident electoral commissioner for INEC in our Imo State. She joins us virtually. Good morning, Prof, and thank you for joining us on the program today. So uh, at the moment, could you tell us, what is the current situation now uh, for INEC? Because we several reports, uh, even 
as well as activities from security agencies concerning those who were said to be responsible for raising some of INEC offices in the state. What is the current situation as things stand now? All right, I, I think we... Uh... Well, Prof, we, we, we can't uh, get your uh, the, your sound on. We seem to have lost it, but we'll uh, get that back in just a moment and uh, bring you back on to speak on some of those. But yeah, she was just speaking about some of the success stories from security agencies about the from commission. But we will get that addressed in just a moment. Um, Prof, can you hear me now? Prof, can you hear me now? Prof? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Audible, audible. How about now? Is it better? Can you hear me? How about now? Is it better? How about now? All right, go ahead. You were you were making the point about All right, go ahead. You were you were making the point about the current situation is. That the situation the situation now is that Imo is stable because of the recent arrests of some of these miscreants, this element arrested and then so we're gone down so uh, Imo is stable now Imo states we are stable now compared to few weeks ago you know between 1st December and 12th December we had three attacks but by the grace of God with the apprehension of these uh, men and then going down on some of them Imo is stable by God's grace do you now have confidence uh, that you will be able to conduct the elections without any fear? Because just a few days ago, you've talked about a number of attacks you've had in the last three months. Uh, a few days ago, we understood that uh, EC local government area was also attacked, as the INEC office there was also attacked again. Are you confident that going forward, your offices in Imo State will not suffer any further attacks? Uh, we trust God. We trust God. Yes, by the grace of God. We are very confident, trusting God. Because uh, the security men, we had, I had a meeting with stakeholders um, two days ago. And then they gave us assurance that they are on board. They are really working to leave the problem on the board. So we trust God that there will be no further attack. Well, Professor, some, some people will say that while trust in God is important, there needs to be a more, uh, will I say, concrete action on the ground. Uh, what sort of assurances have you received from security, uh, from the security men? Because some people will say that, uh, you know, first time is a fluke, second time, I don't know what to say it will be. Uh, We've seen a, a number of attacks. Are they promising that there will be security around the perimeter? Are they promising that there will be, you know, through the night, uh, you, will I say, security presence at all, your, at all your local government offices? What precisely are they planning to do differently from what they have been doing where these attacks have been successful? The uh, security men have been deployed stationed in those areas like in the, uh, the headquarter we have them both the security the army and the civil defense dss we have the, they have been stationed in our headquarter in the various local governments we are using the vigilante groups we are using the uh, uh, Ebubago groups too so we have 100 percent assurance from the security men not just giving us the assurance they are already on ground there was some damage, you know, the INEC headquarters in Imo State, even though uh, security agencies were able, or uh, security agents were able to repel the attack. And in the process, they also, uh, you know, lost uh, one of their personnel. They also took down some of the uh, arsonists, the people who tried to attack, and they arrested a few of them. But some significant damage was done to the building and at least one other office which we saw in the visuals. How disruptive did you find the destruction that happened in your headquarters? For that particular building, it's a building housing, election monitoring and uh, party, EPM, housing uh, security, then transport office, and then a certain of the accounts uh, building. It's very destructive, but we thank God 
because it did not affect our sensitive materials. How is that affecting the operations? I mean, accounts, these are important offices. I imagine that that's where the finances for uh, the for INEC workers in Imo State are taken care of, etc. Um, you know, just you talked about security, that's where they also would stay. How is this affecting the uh, logistics, the welfare of members of staff, and even of the security agents who have been assigned to you? It's, uh, it's really not an MS. Uh, why do I say that? Because we have a backup for the account section. Then for the transport office, we don't have much there. What we have, the pieces of furniture. For the EPM office, we have a backup. So what uh, all those things that got burnt, we have backup. For the security office, nothing serious. All the, all the, we, you know, INEC, we are aware that we are vulnerable. And because of that, we normally create backups in case of this type of incident. So that so, when it happens, we always lay hand on our backup. So what, what can you tell us about the current Staff. distribution of the PVCs? Are people coming up to pick up their PVCs? Is anything affected with that? Overwhelming turnouts. Overwhelming, that overwhelming, we receive overwhelming reports on a daily basis because we are working around the clock. clock. They start at 8 a.m., ends at 3 p.m. But I've even told them to stay till 5 p.m. And we even work on Saturdays and Sundays. And we are having overwhelming turnout of people coming to pick their PVCs. So we mounted the planted groups in all those areas that are at, um, prone to attack. So we have the vigilante groups there. We have the police deployed there, stationed there. You wouldn't notice them. We can't sell our ideas to the public. But what I know is that we are really, uh, INEC is ready and we are working very hard around the clock to ensure that 2023 becomes a reality. So in, in those uh, offices that were burnt, how is the distribution going on? Did you move to another location or are they still going to pick up their PVCs in that particular office? We don't even distribute PVCs in those offices. That's why I told that those offices that we have bought, we are not where we have our sensitive materials or even uh, non-sensitive materials. It's just the personal offices that we are bought. Okay, so when you say the commission is ready, what is the latest development now concerning, remember the controversy that ensued about the uh, local government areas, the quote-unquote Omuma magic? What is the situation now? Headquarters is taking care of that. The investigation is ongoing. So the, the community... Can I, can I get you well? Can I hear your question? Did I answer your question? Yeah, well, when you say the headquarters is taking care of it, does it mean that yeah. all of that list, nothing will be done, no PVCs will be distributed for those affected local government areas until headquarters finishes their investigation? I told you that our PVCs were not affected. No, no, no. I, I'm talking about the Omoma local government area that you say headquarters is taking care of. Does it mean that okay. no PVCs will be distributed in that no, local no, no, government? No, no, no. I didn't get you well. The Omoma that are distributed, the PVCs have been distributed in all the 27 local governments. In new states, I think that's a question very well. Okay, so does does it also wait? I thought that um, if headquarters says they are taking care of it, uh, they will stay action until all of those things are cleared off, and then the public can then be assured that everything is clean and clear. So you're I distributing while. Question, your so, first question very well. We have resol resolved a MoMA issue. It has been taken care of. And we, we have cleaned up the records. Oh, Can okay. you tell me? I, I thought you said headquarters is taking care of no, the meaning is because they're question. still on that, that matter. Well. I didn't get that question very well. For the Omuma magic, it has been resolved. We have cleaned the records. We have to even do it manually for us to get the duplications, the multiplications sent to Abuja, and then it has been cleaned. So for those who were of who made that happen when you say it has been cleaned. So those who did what they did, what is the current situation with them now? I don't think it's, it's anybody's fault. Nobody did anything. It's, it's a, a machine error, which was cleaned. You see some names appearing twice. 
duplications. So it's not somebody, okay, I want to give you an example. Some people that registered in 2011 came back and registered again. Their names appear twice. So we have to manually identify those names, forward to headquarters, and the headquarters cleaned up those names and brought out a clean record. So it wasn't a deliberate act that anybody went and did it, that people were accused. No. Because what we discovered is that these people uh, uh, put, uh, registered twice. But and what we had to do is to do a cleanup. But why is it in that local government uh, that you know the figures almost tripled? If they registered twice, it was very significant. This thing that you are saying that with it, 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 that, it's not true. It's not true. Which part of because it is not true? Because records, yeah. it, 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 it's, it, it's all over. It's not only in Aboma, but it's like they want to uh, hype it. The way they, they, put, uh, they are going about it is not how it looks. Because we have to go through our records. What we have, we have duplications of names. Even that 1904 that people were talking about, it was a, a, it went viral in the media. It's not true. Hmm. So uh, how have you been able to assure the residents? Because remember, concerning your appointment, there was a lot of protest, And some of them were saying that you were uh, a member of the APC. You're very close, related or connection with the governor. And some of them were not happy. How are you assuring them that uh, you will be an unbiased umpire? I'm not in any political party. That I'm related to somebody does not depict that I am in any political party or that I'm going to, I'm not going to be neutral, no. I, I, people that, know, people that uh, know my antecedents, that know me know what I can do. By the grace of God, what I will do, uh, like I said, INET is prepared to conduct a free, fair, and credible election, a seamless exercise. And I have identified with that. And I'm working with that. I don't, I'm not in any, I don't have, I have nothing to do with the governor. Ever since I came, you can even ask those working with me. I know how I have been treating issues. And I've told them that no, I don't want to see any political party in my office discussing anything else about election. No. That is why I said I don't want to receive their gifts so that I can do my, my work and do it. I, I can be on a neutral ground and do my work. So uh, have you had or have you scheduled any meeting with all these political parties to tell them this if it hasn't happened already? I had a stakeholders meeting two days ago, okay. and they were there. Too. Yesterday, self, 12, 12 of them visited my office. I gave them audience, despite the fact that there was no, no uh, court, this, that it wasn't scheduled. That particular action was not scheduled, but I had to give them the audience because they had a problem and they came to me, and I told them what to do. We have to follow the procedure. I know that during the last election, there were questions about uh, recruitment of the ad hoc staffs, all sorts of allegations. So how are you approaching recruitment of ad hoc staffs for these elections now? Thank God they, they, they registered online. It's online registration. I don't even know who you are. We, are, we started training yesterday. We did start training yesterday. Today we are embarking on local government training. After training, those that we train will train the adult staff that will recruit. And they will be the one to help me to do the selection because I don't even know who to select. They all applied online. I don't know who is Sue. So as things stand now, um, you are telling uh, uh, residents in our first, you started out saying distribution of permanent photo cards is ongoing. Uh, you've told your staff they should work up until 5 p.m. As we are speaking now, as we are speaking now they have started work. In all the... Eight, all the eight, 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 every day, including Saturdays and Sundays. Okay. All right. So, um, is there... Do, do you have... Um, what kind of challenge uh, is the commission facing concerning those who have transferred from one location to the other to pick up their PVCs. Is that also going on smoothly? It's going on smoothly, yes. 
It's good because we have to print out their names so that you know where you have uh, all the transfers and the updates they come, uh, uh, we receive from the commission. That's from the headquarters. The other day I had a meeting with my electoral officers and they said that they don't have any problem. If there's any problem, we have a form that you fill and we forward same to headquarters. We have incident form. I'm sorry, did you say so you have incident have, form? Yeah, we have incident form, yes. We have complaint form too. You fill them and send to us. Once you oh. fill it, we upload online. We solve oh, okay. these problems online. Let All me right. tell you, tech is no longer business as usual. Not to you know about this new method, the, the Beavers method. Beavers is a game changer. You cannot manipulate Beavers like that. You cannot, you can't manipulate. I don't think you can manipulate Beavers. It's a new device. And we are teaching this, uh, our people, like the, the training, training I declared open yesterday, was to teach them on how to use the, uh, the use of Beavers. And they will, uh, uh, they will go and teach the local government today, and then they will extend it to the adult staff when the time comes. Once we commence training, we are training those who will train the adult staff because it's a new technology. I think it's ready to deliver on the mandate. So we are no longer, it's no longer business as usual. All right, there are more questions coming from my colleagues. Just hold on a minute. Go ahead, guys. Yes, Professor Agu, uh, I'd like you to still talk to us a bit more about the Omuma magic. The opposition party... I can hear, hear you. Can you hear me? Confirm that you can hear me. Hello? Yeah, okay. Okay, I'd, I'd like you to still talk a bit more about the Omuma magic. Uh, the opposition party in Imo State is asking how the CUPP got wind of that register in the first place. That was before INEC uh, was done with the cleanup of the register. Uh, so they're asking, I'd like you to talk, tell us how you know that register got out in the first place. Also, uh, just about uh, some weeks ago, the CUPP has raised fresh allegations yet again about the register. They are saying there are fake registrations uh, by way of underage voter, multiple registration uh, with one identity registration of dead or foreign persons. Is this part of what you are uh, clarifying that has been cleaned up? Because this is coming after the initial alarm that they raised about the Omuma magic. Um, I assumed duty on 9th of November, 2022. When I assumed duty, I didn't meet, I just saw that thing online, that is uh, in the media, social media. By the time I assumed duty, everything has been taken care of. So I did not meet that or move my magic. I just saw it. And even when I assumed duty and I, 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 call, I called the admin cell to find out about more, about prove more further on the issue of Omoma magic. And that Omoma magic, I doubt it, it never existed. I don't know about it very well because I didn't meet it on ground. What but, I met on ground was a clean record. But the CUPP held the so I know, say copies what I not know. at that conference, at that press conference, the CUPP held copies of that register. And it was not just about, you know, duplications, as you say. Uh, they also identified names, you know, strange to uh, what you would normally find in the locality uh, where they uh, uh, identified that of Uma Magic in Imo State. So it's a bit more than the duplications that you talk about. And this recent one, dated 21st of November, is talking about uh, strange names of foreigners and dead people. That's why I'm telling you that they even put this to my notice. I found it to Abuja, but we discovered that some of these things were not in existence in our own record. I don't know where they derive what they're, what, uh, what they're using, but what I met on ground is what I'm saying. Do you hear me? All right. So since, since you say that um, you, you have stakeholders meeting and whatever complaint anybody has, your doors will be open, they will come to you. So we'll be expecting that if they have any further allegations, you might as well just uh, bring them on and clarify those issues so that they will know that uh, the quote-unquote alleged Omoma magic, as you say, the register is clean. So we'll be keeping focus on that to ensure that uh, it is as you say it is. But we do thank you for talking to us this morning, Professor Sylvia, who is a rec for Imo State. We will be back in just a moment. Stay with us. What are the chances of that happening, manufacturing UAVs locally in Nigeria, UAV 
uh, unmanned aerial vehicles. Of course, that young man or that man you've seen there, you know the details when you see his face, Agogwajie. He is a designer and developer of UAVs and he is certainly a Nigerian. He joins us virtually this morning. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us uh, today. Well, you've been at this for how long and um, how has it been? Yeah, I'm still on it. I'm still on it, and uh, I'm still making progress. For how for how long have you been at it? I remember you had a, an interview with some media house sometime in 2014. How long has it been since you began on this journey? Uh, I can't remember. Uh, Oh, this audio is not very good. Um, I'm pretty sure that we can make it better. But can, can you hear me well? I can hear you. Okay. Very clearly. Okay. We can't hear you as clearly, but tell us, I mean, we can see images right now, but what are the things you can do and what kind of expectations do you have of Nigeria from you? Uh, okay. I, I think we're going to have to call you back, uh, Mr. Ajin. Okay. Because we can't hear you, yeah. we can't hear you. We're gonna have to let's let's do this again. See if we can make it better um, right now. Well, uh, in in that interview that I read that he granted, I mean, it was very very um, cheering to do some of the things that uh, he could do. And if I heard him correctly, I think he said he's been at this since about 1998, and wow. not getting. Um, uh, support, the kind of support that he should get from Nigeria, especially at the time when the Vice President himself was talking about us um, using technology to, you know, in, in, in infusing technology into our security apparatus. Yeah, not just our security apparatus now, you know, we need technology for every aspect of our lives. No, sir. One would imagine you know, that uh, Mr. Agogo would be a very wealthy man, considering how in high demand we find UAVs, also known as drones, by the way, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, are being required for, you know, quite a number of activity uh, in the country. The other day in Kaduna State, uh, a company was launching, uh, you know, a logistics um, firm that would offer services to the effect that they'll be transporting medical equipment via drones, you know. So uh, what's the place of this young Nigerian mm -hmm. in all of this? Uh, mm -hmm. what, what purpose is he serving? Is anybody looking his way to see how they can, you know, patronize his services. So uh, I, I hope that uh, we, we can get through to him and have this conversation and hear, you know, about his own experience. Mm. Uh, it, it'll be very, very interesting to hear him really because, you know, in that um, interview, one of the things that he said, which really touched me and it's, it's an, an unfortunate common experience with a number of people uh, who say that, look, on, if you're a Nigerian and you are innovative, you're creative and all, uh, sometimes you don't get any recognition on, unless you are from outside of Nigeria. And then it's only when you're outside of Nigeria that, you know, the federal government or some governor or government sees that you're doing something that they invite you, then you become a star. But hey, it's something that we can do here at home. Mm -hmm. Why don't we patronize local? I remember reading um, about uh, Mbappe. Uh, Kilian Mbake, you know, the, Cam the Cameroonian the <laughs> French uh, star, you know, whose, whose father said, well, was quoted as saying that it was, uh, he wanted him, his son to play, play for Cameroon, but he couldn't play for Cameroon simply because some official was uh, creating a cog that wasn't absolutely, was absolutely mm. unnecessary. Look at the way French, the African France experience. Is, look at the way France is celebrating him to the point that the Prime Minister of France went and sat with him on the pitch. Uh, when are we going to have that kind of celebration of, of Africans? And here is a Nigerian doing this wonderful thing. And I really hope that we can get him back to, to have this conversation with us because short as it may be, we need to hear him. Uh, part of what uh, you know, I, I read in that look, 
there have been promises made to the young man, and he's not the only one. There's this fellow, you know, also in, in Benway State, I think, who manufactures vehicles, you know, electric vehicles. There is one, I think, also in Oyo State, who converts, you know, engine vehicles to uh, battery-powered vehicles and all of those things. So when are we going to have a system that institutionalizes this innovative, uh, you know, stuff from Nigerians? Mm, big question. There's only government officials that can answer that. Question, I don't know. You know, it's, it's rather, rather unfortunate that we may not be able to have this conversation because our time is already so far spent now. But let's see if we can get him one more time. Mr. G, can you hear me? Well, he is suddenly unavailable at the moment. Well, it's um, Christmas Eve tomorrow and Christmas Day the very next day. So Chamberlain can go Some of have, us don't need reminders. Well, we, we can see that you are the reminder yourself. <laughs> so Chamberlain can go ahead and... I'll take that as a compliment. It is a compliment. Uh, so Chamberlain can go ahead and have all of the Christmas cash and all that he's been looking forward to. Maybe a visit to the office of the CBN governor he, if he is back in town. Because I remember when we had a, an interview with... with uh, um, uh, the director at the CBN he said he didn't have cash, that he was cashless. <laughs> oh, that's not what. Well, that's the intention of the CBN anyway, for all of us to go cashless, isn't it? <laughs> all right. Well, that's the show today uh, from here in Lagos. I'm Ayo Makinde. Have a wonderful rest of your day meals. and a beautiful uh, Christmas season. Of course, we don't have meals for now. All right. We'll take your meals, keep them coming. Uh, we'll find time to read a lot of your meals next. Uh, week that will be after christmas but do enjoy you have yourself a very beautiful christmas i am bukola samuel Wemimo. well I, I was going to say i have good news for both of you uh and guess what the good news is i don't need any reminder that it's christmas yeah. because i'm going to make the <laughs> most of it as much as i can forget the fact that it might be blue here yeah, or green but don't worry about that we know what's up and how to proceed with all of it but of course, we can't thank you enough for letting us be a part of your day today and hopefully your Christmas as well. We don't mind that, do we? Well, we'll see you whenever we see you. Uh, thank you for watching. I'm Chamberlain Osa. Oh, do not forget what the essence of the season is. I do know that people are going to get caught up, you know, shopping, well, buying. Uh, but it would not help if we're doing those things aggressively, pushing other people out of the way, not sparing a thought for other people who are yeah. driving alongside you mm -hmm. or for pedestrians. These little acts are the kinds of things that we should, <laughs> you should spend more energy on. It's not just about the things that you buy or what you cook or what you wear. It's about how you spare thought for the reason for the season um, and how that is also impacting your life. So by all means, let us see you be a little more thoughtful, sharing a little more love around, um, and also praying for our country, especially as we approach the end of the year and looking yeah. forward to elections next year. Let us hope that things keep hope alive, that things will get better. In the meantime, spread love this weekend and have yourself a very Merry Christmas. Thank you for watching. I'm Mark Welkwin yourself. Goodbye.